Let's try to find the limit as x approaches one of x to the third minus one over x squared minus one. And at first, when you just try to substitute x equals one, you get zero over zero. One minus one over one minus one. So that doesn't help us. So let's see if we can try to simplify this in some way. So you might immediately recognize. So let's re rewrite this expression right over here. So it's x to the third minus one over x squared minus one. This on the bottom immediately jumps out as a difference of squares. So no, we know on the bottom that this could be factored as x minus one times x plus one. And so if we could, if somehow this thing on the top also has an x minus one as a factor, then that x minus one will cancel with this, and then we're not going to have an issue of dividing by zero. The reason why I care about the x minus one term is that this is what's making our denominator equal zero. When you say x equals one, you have one minus one times one plus one. So zero times two, it's this zero that's making our denominator zero. So if we can have an x minus one up here, then, they, they, then, they can, then we can cancel these out for any x not equal to one, and then we might have a a much simpler thing to find the limit of. So let's think about whether x to the third minus one is the product of x minus one and something else. And to do that, we can do a little bit of algebraic long division. Some of you guys might already recognize a pattern here, but we'll try to do, we'll, let's divide x minus one into it to see, to see what, whether it divides evenly into x to the third minus one. So x minus one, we just look at the highest degree term, x goes into x to the third, x squared times, goes x squared times, and actually let me do it this way so that we, we can keep track of the place. So this would be the x, this would be the second degree place, first degree place, and this would be the constant. So x to the third minus one. x goes into x to the third, x squared times, x squared times x is x to the third, x squared times negative one is minus x squared. Now we're going to want to subtract this. So we are then left with x squared. x goes into x squared x times plus x. x times x is x squared. x times minus one is minus x. And once again, we're going to subtract this. We'll swap the signs, negative and positive. And so these cancel out and we're left with x. And then we bring down a minus one. x minus one goes into x minus one exactly one time. One times x minus one is x minus one, and then you subtract, and then you have no remainder. So this numerator right over here can be factored as x minus one times x squared plus x plus one. And so we can say that this is the same exact thing. We can have these cancel out if we assume x does not equal one. So that is equal to x squared plus x plus one over x plus one for x does not equal, x does not equal one. And that's completely fine, because we're not evaluating as x equals one, we're evaluating as x approaches one. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as x approaches one of, of x squared plus x plus one over x plus one. And now this is much easier to to find. You could literally just say, well, what happens when, as we get right to x equals one? Then you have one squared, which is one plus one plus one, which is three, over one plus one, which is two. So we get that equaling three halves.